Hello and welcome back to my channel. In today's session, we will be diving into uh, 15 scenario based uh, uh, interview questions as part of your uh, shell scripting that you might encounter in your DevOps interview. Uh, we'll also look at your uh, detailed answers for these questions. Now, whether you're preparing for an interview or you're just looking to sharpen your skills, then this video is for you. Once again, before I start off with the session, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Also, I will be sharing the um, GitHub repo where all the scripts are available. So let's get started with this. The first question we have is, I want to automate the deployment of an application to multiple servers. How would you achieve this using a shell script? So for this, um, uh, we will be writing a script which will copy our application to uh, multiple servers. All right. And then once uh, the application has been copied, we'll need to restart the uh, service as well on each of the server. So here we are, we are declaring a variable uh, array, which is basically your servers, the list of servers where the application needs to be uh, copied. Then we are giving the path where uh, the uh, application needs to be copied. And then uh, or rather this would be the source and this would be your destination. And then we are doing a loop. So we are going to take each of the server one after the other and we'll start copying from the source to the destination. And uh, uh, we will also do a restart of the service on each of the server. All right. So that way we can ensure that the application is consistent uh, across all of your infrastructure. The application is deployed. And uh, in this case, we are making use of the SCP, which is your secure copy. To copy the files uh, to the remote machines and then SSH into that machine to um, run commands, which is to uh, restart the service. Now, since we are copying HTML file, we need to restart the Apache service for it to uh, reflect those new changes. So this way we can automate the deployment of our application to remote machines. The next question we have is create a script to monitor disk usage and send an alert if the usage exceeds 80 percentage. So Monitoring plays a very important role when we talk about your infrastructure. So monitoring your disk usage can mainly help us in preventing any system issues uh, which can arise due to lack of space. Now, in this case, we want to monitor the threshold, which is at 80 percentage. So here we are declaring a variable threshold equals to 80 and then we are running this command, which will uh, uh, get the disk utilization. And then we are basically doing a while loop. So we are basically reading the data from the machine. We are checking for this uh, threshold. If the threshold exceeds, uh, if the usage exceeds the threshold, we will be uh, echoing this message. And then you can also integrate your email mechanism or your alert mechanism, which will send out a notification. So this script, it checks the disk usage. So this particular line, df-h, this particular line checks for the disk usage and alerts if it exceeds the specified threshold. So you can define that. So this script uses your df command, which is used to check your disk usage. And we're using this awk command to process the output. So what are the output that we're getting from here? We're processing it. Uh, we are kind of filtering it uh, just to get the uh, disk usage data. And then based on that, we are um, uh, uh, checking for the condition. And if it satisfies, we are taking some action for it. The next question we have is write a script to check if a service is running and start the service if it's not running. So ensuring that your critical services are running, it's very essential, right? Any application you take, like it could be a Tomcat application, it could be an Apache application. So making sure the service is running always, it's very critical, right? So in this case, we can write a script which will check the status of your service and then start the service if the service is not running. So in this case, we are looking for the HTTPD service. We are declaring it as a variable and then we are running this command. So if it's not active, if the service is not active, then we are printing that the service now is not active and then we are starting the service. And if it's running, then we are telling that, hey, the service is already running. So this script, it uses the system CTL to manage the, uh, to manage the service. So you can also do a loop if you have multiple services that you want to check, you can do that also. You can create an array and then you can do a for loop and check for each of the services. The next question we have is write a script to backup logs older than seven days and uh, delete the original files. Now backup is a very important um, aspect of your applications or your data, right? So regularly taking backup and cleaning up your logs 
can help you manage your disk space um, in a better ways and you can uh, uh, avoid issues like your your disk usage is at high or your cost is at high all those things can be avoided so in this case we want to take a backup of any logs that is older than seven days and then uh, delete the original log so this script it archives any logs which is older than seven days and then also deletes the original log all right so in this case we are giving the log directory the original uh, path and then the backup directory where i want to uh, put the logs all right so, and then we are using this find command to locate the logs which are older than seven days and then we are zipping it so find the log directory uh, which is older than seven days once it finds it we are uh, compressing it we are archiving it and we are giving it a name and then we are deleting it and then finally we are printing a message we can also schedule this to run so that every time it runs it looks for the logs which are older than seven days and it will automatically archive those logs the next question we have is create a script to automate database backup so automating your database backups now this can ensure that your data is regularly saved so you know database itself is a very important uh, a component of your application right so regularly taking a backup of your database uh, is a very common task at an organization level so we can do that as well so this script that we have here this performs a, a backup of your mysql database right you can back up any database you want but in this case i have taken the example of the uh, mysql uh, database so first we will need to uh, set up the uh, or we we'll need to give the information that the command will use to uh, establish the connectivity so uh, what is the db name what is the username what is the password and where do you want to back it up you can also make use of your variables if you don't want to hard code it here and then we are using this mysql dump command to take a backup and then um, uh, store it on your server or any location you want so we are using this command we are establishing the connectivity using the username and the password and the db name and then we are uh, backing it up um, in the uh, backup directory that we have defined here and then we are finally printing that the backup is completed this way you can take a backup of your database you can obviously you can automate it as well the next question we have is write a script to rotate logs on a weekly basis so log rotation mainly helps us to prevent uh, the growing of your log files basically you know again we are mainly talking from a space uh, disk utilization perspective and uh, only maintaining the logs that we um, uh, need so this script will rotate your logs by moving them to an archive directory weekly so you can give your uh, log directory your archive directory and then again here we are making use of the find command to find any logs which are um, older than seven days and then we are moving it to the archive directory so that way what happens is your log directory will always have the sufficient space to store the logs and any logs which are older than seven days will be moved to a different directory which has sufficient space the next question we have is write a script to check the status of multiple services and restart any of them that are not running so um like i said you can also check for multiple services and you can basically check whether the services are running or not and if they're not running we can restart those services so for this we will need to first define our array basically the the list of services that you want to check for and then we are doing a for loop so for uh, we are looping through this array and then we are checking for each of the service whether the service is running or not if the service is not running we will restart it and if it is running we will simply print telling that the service is already running so for this we are making use of this uh, uh, system ctl to manage your services the next question we have is create a script to update a web application by pulling the latest code from a git repository so um automating your web application deployment that's another automation that uh, we can uh, look at so under this we'll have to essentially get the latest copy of your code and then deploy it to your application servers so in this case this script what it does is it will uh, pull your latest code from your uh, github repository and then uh, add that code to your web server and then restart the web server as well so in this case we have defined our web directory where our application is deployed and we have defined our git repo the url to your github repository 
So we are doing a git pull. So git is basically uh, your uh, version control tool. We are using that to update our uh, GitHub repository. So we are going to the web directory. We are updating our GitHub repo and then we are restarting our service. So that way you can update your application code on your servers and then make sure to restart the service so that it uh, reflects the new changes that we have deployed. The next question we have is write a script to compress and archive old log files. So um, one option we have is to move the archive files to another directory. Now that solves a problem to a certain extent. The, uh, the additional step to that would be to compress and archive your log files as well, which can help you to save your disk space. All right. So this script will help you to compress your log files which are older than 30 days and also move them to an archive directory. So we are defining the log directory, we are defining the archive directory. And then again, we are making use of the uh, find command. All right. So find uh, the log directory, which is older than 30 days. And we are archiving it using the gzip um, command. That's one option. Um, and then the other uh, option you have is to move the uh, compressed logs. Okay, so here we are zipping it and then we are finding the zipped archive, moving it to the archive directory over here. So step one, we are uh, compressing the log files. Step two, we are moving it to the archive directory. So we are using the gzip to archive mv2, move it to your destination directory. The next question we have is write a script to automate the cleanup of temporary files, which are older than 10 days. So Generally, we work with temporary files uh, which uh, are available during the runtime or so. Now, cleaning up those temporary files can also help you prevent any unnecessary uh, disk usage. So in this case, this script that we have, this will help you to delete any temporary files which are older than uh, 10 days. All right. So again, we are making use of the find command. So we are giving the directory where your temporary files are available. Then we're using the find command to find any files which are older than 10 days and then we are deleting them. And then finally we are printing a message telling that the files have been deleted. The next question we have is write a script to monitor CPU usage and alert if it exceeds a certain threshold. So monitoring your disk usage, that's one part of your monitoring, monitoring your CPU is also important and this will help you to prevent any uh, performance related issues to your application and to your servers. So in this case, we make use of the CPU usage to uh, basically check and then alert if the CPU usage exceeds the specified threshold. So here we're defining the threshold and then uh, we're using this CPU underscore usage, which is a variable. We're using the top command. So in this case, top can be used to uh, get your CPU utilization. And then we are doing a grep, which is to filter. We are doing some stream editing. We are using the awk command to get the CPU utilization only. And then we are comparing it with the threshold. If it is greater than the threshold that we have defined, we can print a message and set up uh, email notifications. Uh, if not, you can have your else condition as well, telling the CPU is uh, within the threshold as well. All right. So we can make use of this script to monitor your CPU usage. The next question we have is write a script to install a list of packages. So if you're a DevOps engineer, they're installing multiple packages uh, to multiple servers is something that you will generally end up working with. So you can also automate this package installation, which ensures that your software setup is consistent across your uh, servers. So this script will help you to install multiple packages to um, your server. All right. So wherever you're running this uh, script. So first we'll declare a variable here with an array. So we are giving the list of packages that we want to install and then we are doing a loop. So we'll pick each of these package one by one. So in this case, we're using the DPKG to check the package status, whether the package is installed or uh, not. If it's not installed, then we're using the apt get, which is our package manager to install the package. And if the package is already present, we'll simply print telling the package is already installed. The next question we have is write a script to sync a local directory with a remote directory using the rsync command. 
So if you're working with uh, remote machines, a particular path and, uh, you know, if you have a requirement where you want to uh, uh, consistently synchronize your uh, local directories or any directories, you can, you can do that as well. So this will ensure that your data is consistent across your servers. So this script, it makes use of the rsync command to synchronize a local directory with a remote directory. So we are giving the local directory path and then the details about the remote machine. So the user, uh, the remote host, and then the remote directory path. And then we are using the rsync command to perform the efficient file synchronization. So rsync, the arguments, uh, the local directory, which is your destination, and then your source. So what this will do is this will synchronize your local directory with the uh, remote directory. The next question we have is write a script to check the health of a web application by sending an HTTP request and checking the response. Now, deploying an application, that's one part of uh, your application. Or you also want to, you, you may want to be a little proactive and check whether your application is healthy or not, making sure the application is always up and running. All right. So that's where we can do a regular health checks of your uh, web applications. So this script will help you to um, send a HTTP request to the web application and then check the response code or the status of the application. So you can define your URL and what is the expected return code and then you can do a validation of that. So this script uses the curl command to send the HTTP request to the URL that you have defined and then it will check the status code. So whatever the uh, status code you will get, you're storing it in this variable and then we are comparing it. So if the status code is not equal to 200, that means our application is not healthy. And if it is 200, then the application is healthy. We can, uh, uh, we can do this to basically check the health of your web application. The next question we have is write a script to automate the configuration of a new server with necessary packages and settings. So automating your server configuration, now this will help you to ensure that your servers are consistent and also helps you to uh, save time. All right. So this script here will help you to install all of your necessary packages and also set up some of the basic configurations like your uh, firewall settings. So this script will help you to update your package list, install the specified packages and also configure the firewall. So first we are defining the list of packages, then the list of firewall rules that needs to be applied. We are updating the machine and then we are doing a loop over these packages and we are installing each of the packages one by one. Once the packages has been installed, we are going to loop over this firewall rules and then we'll run this UFW, which is your universal firewall to basically add these rules to your, your server firewall so that it allows those traffic this way you can um, uh, do the configuration of your service. You can automate it so that every time you are launching a new server, you'll have this configuration available. And that brings us to the end of our 15 scenario based uh, shell scripting interview questions for DevOps with the complete uh, detailed answers. Now, if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more content and uh, interview trip, interview tips. Uh, hit the bell icon so you never miss an update. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.